So now you're going to say it's going to shift, shift to starting, receiving content, taking over, there's us, and now we're live. Filtering in. I, I moved about two seconds after I moved. <laughs> oh, yeah, you have to remember the delay. So, anytime if, if you need real time while we're showing stuff on camera, look over here. You'll be seeing it real time. Oh. Hey, Smokey. Hey, Cajun. Hey, John. Hey, Joe. So we got a few minutes here for let everybody start filtering in, then we'll get going. Or even one of the storm areas. Hey, Bill. Yeah, I saw there's some uh, pretty serious storms going on in a few areas. Yeah, so uh, what is it? Iowa is getting like horrible flooding right now. Still pouring. So is everybody enjoying the, the weekend seminar so far? Yep, this is Mr. Hughes. Good day. Everybody, if you missed any of the previous videos, make sure you go back and, and rewatch them so that you can get all the clues for the end of the stream giveaway that's going to be on Monday that Ken's going to do. we got one more minute and then we'll get going. More people, I'm sure, will start showing up. You didn't get a clue. Ken said he emailed it to you last night. Hey, Riser. Yeah, so for all four of the coin seminars so far, Riser has done the the opening introduction video seminar or stream. Oh, okay. He's kind of become the the guy. The go-to guy for that.
All right, so we're going to get going. So for those of you that saw my my preview video, you know who this is. For those of you that don't, this is Barry Hughes. He is a Canadian coin expert. He is actually a native of Canada. And I will let you tell a little bit about yourself to the to the folks. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I'm glad to have this time with you and talk about Canadian coins, my first love of coins. I started collecting when I was about seven years old, going through my parents' pocket change and such a like, uh, going to the bank, getting a roll of pennies and seeing which old ones I pulled out. Uh, as, as I progressed, I uh, would go and spend half my paycheck getting rolls of pennies and rolls of nickels and dimes and quarters. Um, luckily, that was back in the good old days in the early 60s where there was still silver around. I bought my first mint set from the Royal Canadian Mint in 1964 uh, when the Royal Canadian Mint didn't rip people off. They actually charged you $2.95 for a dollar ninety-one, a penny, nickel, dime, quarter, 50 cent piece and dollar, silver dollar. Uh, they would charge you $2.95 for. So it was great. Uh, unfortunately, I don't deal with the mint too much now. I buy after mint products because you wait three, four years, you get them at half the price that they originally came out at. But uh, moving right along, we're going to get started. And uh, <clears throat> the early coins uh, Canada had uh, were primarily British coins. Uh, there was some uh, Spanish and French coins. Of course, uh, some coins from the United States had floated up that way too, um, and they used all those. But the actual first coins that were made for use in Canada were uh, half penny and one penny tokens. And uh, I'm going to show a few examples of that. This is from the a bank token of Lower Canada, which were the provinces Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and PEI, and Newfoundland. This one here, I won't get ahead of myself here. I'll let him show you both sides there. Oh, Canada, side to side flip. If anybody is not familiar with Canada coins, so our coins flip up and down, Canada's flip side to side. And if you notice, um, uh, there's French on that. that uh, that's from the Bank of Montreal and that particular one. And so uh, it was French. This is uh, Upper Canada uh, one penny token from the Bank of Upper Canada. Um, just a sideline. Nearly all coins that were made uh, up all the way up to 1908 when the Royal Canadian Mint was formed were made in, at the Royal London Mint in England. Uh, there are ones, that, and I'll have an example of this down the road, with a little H on it. So whenever you see a Canadian coin with an H on it, you uh, can tell that it is coming from um, the Heaton Mint in England. This one is the Bank of Montreal uh, token. And there again, uh, half penny. Heaton Sons was uh, privately owned, right? Yes, I, I believe so. Uh, after, uh, and, and this is just three examples, there are many, many tokens. Uh, some companies would make their own uh, big companies companies would make their own tokens. Uh, the Hudson Bay Fur Company, for instance, they would pay their people in, in uh, tokens and you could cash them in at the Hudson Bay store. Uh, from there, we go into uh, some of the provincial coins. And the early provincial coins uh, were Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and Newfoundland, and Prince Edward Island. We'll do Prince Edward Island first. They only had one penny, one year, 1871. Those things are pain in the butt to find. <laughs> I'm always trying. <laughs> uh, they only made the one penny 
uh, the one year in uh, PEI. Uh, they used other people's currency, obviously, a lot. And PEI is a very small island. Now, I have a question. Yes. I have heard this being referred to as being technically part of the, if you're collecting all the Canadian large cents, that this is technically part of that collection. Yes. Is it or is it not? Yeah. Yes, it's the provincial part of it. Um, and, you know, some people think that... Uh, Canada didn't form as a country until 1867. However, the first coinage of Canada was 19 or 1858, which came out, and we'll be showing that in a few minutes. Uh, penny, nickel, dime, and quarter, or a 20 cent piece, actually. Um, but yes, if you want to gather up all the coins of Canada, uh, the provincial ones, uh, the Nova Scotia, we'll, we have a couple examples there, a half penny and a, a, a penny. And um, then we will get on to that's uh, Vicky, right? Yes, that, that's Victoria. She ruled up till 1901. Oops, I don't. And so these, these coins are a fairly good size, but you take into consideration that probably you would have to work most of a day to earn one of these things. So, uh, you know, the times have changed. If somebody asked you if you wanted a half penny for a day, you probably wouldn't go for it. Well, in some cases, if it was a $500 half penny, you probably would go for it. <laughs> if it was a flowing hair and BU, I'll work a day for that. Yeah, yeah absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Now we'll take a look also um, at some provincial, early provincial coinage. Um, they made a half penny in Nova Scotia. They also made uh, a penny, a uh, five cent piece, and a ten cent piece, and I believe a twenty cent piece for a couple of years. Newfoundland probably had the, or definitely did have the largest amount of coinage of any of the provinces. Um, it started in 1865 and it went up all the way through to 1947. They didn't become a province until 1949. And if you take a look at this uh, 1949 silver dollar, it has a ship on it celebrating the forming of uh, Newfoundland with the rest of Canada. Uh, they had a full series of uh, pennies and then small pennies starting in uh, 38, 1938. Uh, they also had the small little five cent, uh, five cent silvers, uh, a, a full complement of dimes, 20 cent pieces, quarters, and 50 cent pieces. So they had a lot of different uh, denominations and a lot of different coins. Uh, there are a lot of varieties on these coins. Um, I never really got too involved in um, the early tokens. These provincial ones that you're seeing now I collected, but uh, the early tokens I once was at a show and was offered a double row box with about 300 uh, tokens in it. And I thought, oh, man, I'm going to go into the token business. So I went out and got a token book and started looking them up. After about three and a half hours and a lot of frustration, I had only got about three done, three or four done. Uh, many of them have so minute varieties that you go blind trying to see them all. Um, the, we'll have an extra hair or an extra rosebud or leaf or a higher O or a lower O. 
and uh, a great deal of varieties. Um, there is a fair bit of varieties within uh, the provincial and the regular Canadian decimals uh, coins, but um, many of them are minute varieties and uh, unless the coin is in I would say VFEF condition, you really need to um, have, you know, it has to be at least VF or EF to be able to see that it's that in good, good a shape to see the variety because the variety is fairly small. Moving on up to 1858, uh, we talked a little bit about it. Uh, we have an example of a penny. Uh, five cent silver, a dime, and a 20 cent piece. The 58 penny is probably one of the rare pennies. Um, it's uh, a tougher coin to get. They range anywhere in the 75 to <coughs> three or $400, depending on the condition and uh, of it. Yeah, just on a quick note, uh, to anybody out there who thinks that there's no money in foreign coins, you're looking at a $300 coin right now. So yeah, we do have some really good ones. Um, two of the examples that I won't have today, uh, I have owned the one, but I haven't owned the other one, is a 1921 five cent silver. I've had three of them over the past 50 years. Don't own one right now. Everybody has a hole in there. They start about 5,000 and go rapidly up. Uh, the other one that uh, I have never had owned is a 50 cent piece, 1921, and there is only about 50 of them, and they start off 35, 40,000 in rough condition, going up into several hundred thousand if they're in good condition. But um, so not something you're going to find in pocket change. No, <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. Um, the, uh, but true, true collectors that are doing a series of pennies will normally start at 1858 and work up through, or, or if you're doing five cent silvers, which are approximately half the size of a dime. Uh, they were called uh, fish scales because they represent, or they sort of look like fish scales. They're very tiny. Many, many of them have bends in them because they were used as screwdrivers. Um, and many of them, I'm sure, got lost because they were about half the size of a dime. So I, I know a lot, a lot of, a lot of farms. You know, a farmer had a loose screw on on his tractor or something. He would just use a five cent silver to tighten it up. And if it got too bit dinged up, it probably fell to the ground. He didn't worry about it too much. Now, that's a nice one. Yeah. Moving on, um, the coinage just carried right on up through. Um, every year was not represented uh, from uh, after 1858 and 1859 pennies were made. Um, and there was nothing made then until 1870, which was three years after Canada became a country. Canada became a country in 1867, and <clears throat> they continued to make pennies most years, uh, the five cent silvers most years. There, there was a lot of years that they didn't make 50 cent pieces or 20 cent pieces or quarters. They made uh, the large Canadian penny. It's worth a dollar less now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, they made them up to 1920. In 1920, they decided that they would go to a small penny. And I've got both varieties here, the large penny and the small small penny. And they... This uh, is the large. And partway through the year, they decided that they were going to make the small one. And uh, they did away with the large penny. And from then on, they carried on with the small penny. These are relatively good examples. These came out of my 
quote unquote good bots. Um, oh yeah, I'd give this one at least like a. Yeah, it's got some like le 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 less luster around the sides there, and uh, <clears throat> this is a 1920 small penny that's coming up. It had two maple leaves off to the side, and uh, this design ca carried on until 1936. Uh, in 1937, when George the uh, fifth died and George the sixth took over, uh, they changed the sign, um, the design, to uh, a different set of maple leaves. In the small pennies, there are several uh, key varieties, 22, 23, and 25, 1922, 1923, and 1925 are the most valuable ones. Uh, I'm going to show you a really nice 1923 um, uh, mint state, and uh, they get very expensive. Um, yeah, even, these are all holes in my collection. <laughs> even, even in good or very good, you're looking at fifty to a hundred dollars for these three coins in each one. Uh, the 1924, 1926, 27, and uh, 30 and 31 are semi keys, and you can usually pick them up for two to twenty dollars. So they kind of are on par with like the United States sweet scent key dates. Yes, exactly. So conversely, uh, they went from a large penny to a small penny. They went from the small five cent silver in 1920. And, and actually, 1921 was the last year they made the five cent silver. Uh, extremely rare. There's approximately 200 of them, as I mentioned before. I've owned three of them in my 50 years. Um, even 35, 40 years ago, they were about $1,500 in good, very good condition. Uh, to find one in better condition, you're going to be looking at several thousand dollars. Um, what happened was there was a full slate of uh, five cent silvers made in 1921, but before they got out, they recalled them all and uh, only about 200 of them escaped the mint. And because they decided that in 1922 they were going to go to the nickel, and this is a copy or uh, an example of a 1922 nickel. Um, that they had. If you if you look here, if you're grading a coin, this is this is one of the highest points right on the crown. There are eight or eight little dots in the crown. There will be a little diamond, a, a set of two two dots, a diamond, two dots, diamond, two dots. The second set of double dots, you're nearly always wore off. Even in a, they're they're a very weak strike because nickel is very hard and they didn't punch it in really well. Um, a couple of other examples of different metal they used. He's going to blow that up there for a minute and check and show you the crown where it comes in. That second set of dots it is visible in this coin, but they have started to wear. And that will be the first highest point of wear on a coin, on this particular coin. Mo moving along, we um, during the war in 1942 and 1943, the war effort needed uh, a lot of nickel uh, for guns and, and different parts of machinery. So they did the coin, uh, it's called a Tombak nickel, it's sort of made out of a bronze material. And that was in 1943 uh, and 1942. 1942 had the traditional uh, beaver on it. 
1943, you'll notice that it had a V on it, the victory sign. Uh, 1943, 44, 45 all had the V signs on it. Um, and uh, What does that word mean? I've always wondered that. What, what word? Tom Back. Tom Back. Does that word have an actual meaning? That that word probably has an extra X. And I was thinking of looking that up before <laughs> I came. And so I just happened to have my Charlton book here. I'll hold it up. Hold it middle. <laughs> there you go. There we go. Charlton Canadian Coins. It has a wealth of information. I, I've been getting these for years and uh, has a lot of information. Uh, uh, so far as pricing, Canadian Coin News is a very good guide for pricing uh, because the Charlton only comes out once a year, something like the Red Book. The Red Book comes out and silver is low and then silver goes up. It's out of whack or vice versa. Uh, but uh, let me look up. While he's looking that up, these are the ones that down around the rim have the Morse code. And what that says, if you see all the dots and the dashes, what that actually says on there is, we win when we work willingly. Okay, it does not happen to say what what uh, the material is made of in here. In a lot of cases, it does, but uh, I don't want to stall you now. Yeah, I was no, 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 that was a, that was a very good question. <laughs> I, I plan on looking that up. You can probably Google it and find out. Um, in the the next year, they came out with the same design with that V and. Uh, the 44 and 45, and they made them uh, uh, out of a sort of a chrome type material uh, coating steel. And um, there was a few got through with no chrome in those years, and they are worth a little bit more, not a whole lot more, but a few more dollars. See, like, I didn't even know until I got that last batch of the Tom Bark from you. Yes. That they made a beaver Tom Bark. Yes, I never that, yeah, the, the 42 was a Tom Bark beaver. So, moving on to, uh, <coughs> we're going to jump up to quarters now. Um, the, wow. This is just giving you an example of the, the H and the, the design also of the Victoria Quarter. Um, it uh, you will raise it up there just a little bit. There you go. Right at the very bottom, between the ribbons, uh, at the very bottom in the middle, you'll see an H, hopefully, on your screen. And that is from the Heaton Mint in, uh, over in, in Britain. Um, and that's where that was produced. As I said, there, there are many varieties uh, of all of the denominations have varieties. I decided to bring three varieties of the 1936 um, in quarters. The 1936 penny, you may, if you have dealt with Canadian at all, heard, heard about the 1936 dot penny, which is probably just as rare as the 1943 copper penny down here in the States. Very, very rare. There's probably only uh, three to five known. And, um, but in the quarters, uh, they do have a variety with a dot. They also have a variety with a dot and a bar on it. And uh, we're, Lewis is going to show you all three varieties. The first variety having no dot or bar. This is the no, nothing. That's the nothing. And yeah, I was oogling this coin before. We it's, it's a beautiful this coin. Lovely tone. Very if I could if I could afford this thing, I'd be buying it off of him right now. <laughs> this point is amazing. Now where you're looking at is down here. Yeah. There again, right between the ribbons. Right at the very bottom, like about a sixteenth of an inch up from the denicles on the the, the bottom there. Now, 
So if you let me check this actually shows the pointer on it, it would be right here. If it was the dot variety. Yes. So go ahead and put up the dot variety. And uh, it's showing the pointer. There we go. Yep, right there. Yeah, it'll show right there. It'll be right in there. And here's the dot one. Which are considerably rare. There's not a whole lot of them. Twist it around the right way. There you go. It's it's quite easy to see. Yeah, there's not very plain. And then there's a dot and a bar. The bar is up, uh, just above the dot. And uh, we looked on the camera. It doesn't come through real clear. Uh, with a glass, you can see it re readily. It's it's basically a die break, so it doesn't show up really, really clear. I'm not sure whether you'll be able to see it, but just about a sixteenth inch or so above the dot, there's a small line running from ribbon to ribbon. Yeah, you got the dot right there, and then yeah, we we're trying to make this focus in on it before. You sort of see it, ish. So, moving right along, we we're going to go to silver dollars now. In 1935, uh, when uh, King George V was coming to an end of his reign, uh, they started the silver dollar, and here is an example of it. This is the first year? Yeah, this is the first year. They made them in 1935 uh, and 36, and then he died. And in 1937, they uh, made it with George the uh, uh, Six on it. Apparently, they really, really liked this design because they used it for a really long time. Yes, uh, the two voyagers. Uh, in a canoe. And that's the northern lights, right? Yes, the, the, those lines are, are showing up the northern Aurora. lights. Aurora Borealis. And there is George V in all his glory. The glorious goatee. The third most rarest coin, as I mentioned, uh, the 21 half is the rarest Canadian coin. The 21 five cent silver is the second rarest. The 48 dollar is the next rarest coin. And we're going to put up an example of that right now. Uh, they only made about 18,000 of them. And a uh, very tough coin. I've, I've owned probably two or three dozen of them. And usually I don't own them for long because I, right now I have three, but uh, as fast as I get them, if I do a big show uh, like Long Beach or fun, Florida Fun Show, uh, they'll get snapped up by dealers or by public yeah, who no. all have a hole in their collection. Let me show you guys the price that's marked on here. That's not 20. There's no dot there. <laughs> Uh, it's a very, 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 very tough coin. In 1967, they they came uh, out with a series of coins. Oh, by the way, this one. I'm dropping something. This one is George the Younger. Yeah, this is George the Sixth. This is uh, George the Sixth. In uh, 1967, oh, no, yeah, that's going back to George V. Uh, oh, this is the 35. Yeah. In 1967, they did an animal series for the, the coins, and they had a dove on the penny, a rabbit on the nickel, a fish on the dime, a bobcat on the quarter, a howling wolf on the 50 cent piece, and the famous Canadian goose on the the um, 
on the dollar. I'm so, still on the lookout for the diving goose. The diving goose, yes. Uh, if, if you find a diving goose, uh, they can be worth anywhere from about $700 to $2,000, depending on uh, how much he's diving and uh, what kind of shape the coin is in. So the diving goose was a die misalignment. So you have it where it was aligned like that. Right, but everything else was in its place. In 1968, they went to um, a Canadian uh, nickel dollar and a slightly smaller in diameter than the other one. And um, they also made a silver dollar as well, 50% uh, silver. Price? Could be. You see that, right? Yeah, I see it. I, I never. Oh, the, the, that extra. You're talking about the double shadowing. Yeah. No, that that's just from it sitting in there for a long time. I think. It's uh, that's on the. Oh, that's uh, on, on the, the cell, cellophane. Yeah, that's on the cellophane. Oh, I've never seen that before. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got all excited there for a minute. Cool. <laughs> I've never and, seen cellophane. Uh, only uh, for collectors, they made, not for circulation, they made a silver one made out of 50% silver uh, for each of the years from 71 on. And um, in 1986, the Canadian government and the Mint got together and decided that they would start a dollar coin. And I have several Americans always ask me, well, how come you guys have the dollar coin and now the $2 coin and it never really caught on down here? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, the Susan B. Anthony's came out first and nobody liked it because it was too much like a quarter. Uh, subsequently, they had the Ike dollars, which were big. They also had uh, the presidential dollars, which they, or the Sacagawea dollars and then the presidential dollars, which they uh, sort of copied off the, the loon dollar. However, they didn't force people to use them. In Canada, literally overnight, all the one dollar bills vanished in 1986. You could have a stack 10 inches high, but when they you spent your last one, um, they were gone. So everybody was forced to use uh, the loony dollar. And uh, 10 years later, they decided to make a toonie. In 1996, they brought out what we call a toonie. Uh, the joke about this is that this is, turn it over. Uh, we have Queen Elizabeth on this. And this is Canadian humor for those that don't get it. This is the queen with the bear behind. Uh, if you turn it over, you will see the bear behind the queen. So that is the joke about that, that the queen has bear behind. And then uh, Lewis had mentioned the Northern Lights. Several editions of the Canadian coins have been uh, colorized. And they're, they're colorized at the mint. They're not an aftermarket colorized like a lot of coins down here. Um, and here is a beautiful coin uh, that they they did plain and also they colored uh, did a colorization. I don't know that you'll see the colors on it, but it, it, it's got greens and purples and blues um, of the Northern Lights in Canada. Um, growing up in the country back in Northern Ontario. I, uh, I I got to see the Northern Lights quite often. If you lived in big cities, the the lights from the streetcars and the lights from the city would block out a lot of it, and you wouldn't see it. But if you went out in the country, you you would see it. Uh, just a couple more things. Our time is flying by, and I want to leave some time for questions. Um, the three major sets. Uh, Canada has made many many sets, but. The most common one is the proof-like set, which I will, uh, he's going to hook up the other camera to show it there. It's in a cellophane, much like the uncirculated mint sets of the United States. Okay, 
refresh card. There we go. <laughs> they also made a specimen set. This way. Here. Each year uh, of specimen coins, which you can see there. And the third set is a proof set, which was, uh, or a double dollar set, they call it. It has the loom dollar, plus it has a silver dollar in it. And the silver dollar is a commemorative dollar that each year they take a different design of something that happened that year. This particular year, the N uh, was of the NHL, had been around for a certain number of years, and they did it with the NHL but in 93, but every year was a different uh, design. Very beautiful coins, very beautiful coins, in which uh, I'm going to take a commercial break right now and tell you that on Monday, Lewis is going to be doing a large Canadian sale. I've put together a lot of sets and different things. So if you have any interest in uh, getting a good deal on Canadian, I've started most of it anywhere from 15 to 20% to 50% of uh, the general asking price of the coins. So um, yeah, it would the, be well worth your time to check into. Um, the Uber girl, her, uh, that's Amy Smith. She actually runs a blog online about Canadian coins. Ah, she, cool. she loves Canadian coins. Cool. Yes, she does. Uh, very quickly, uh, I'm just going to show you four uh, or five uh, notes. Uh, this is an older $1 note with the king on it, uh, King, king George VI. I don't uh, do much with currency. Uh, I'm mainly a coin person. Uh, I've always been a coin person, but in my hunt around, I usually end up finding some currency that people want to get rid of at the same time as they're getting rid of their coins. <coughs> Here's an example of a $1 bill, which became, as I say, extinct in 1986. Um, they don't make those anymore. If you, the mint shredded them all. So if you find one, not that they're worth any money, but they're a neat souvenir. Do you need a drink? <coughs> yeah, a little drink of water <laughs> would be great. <clears throat> Getting a little dry. Two dollar bill here again. You're making me want to clear my throat. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, these have been extinct since 1996. <clears throat> yeah. You'll notice that uh, the Canadian coins or the Canadian currency has some beautiful colors in them, uh, and each denomination has a different color. Yeah, they have those crazy polymer notes now. Yes, I didn't bring an example of that, but yes, they're making them out of plastic now. They're like damn near indestructible. And very, 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 very hard to counterfeit now. And this is a copy of the ten dollar note in a pretty purple. Thank you so much. So this more or less concludes the the portion of the my my talk. Uh, but I am happy to entertain any questions that you might have. Uh, I, am, uh, I am old enough uh, to not be afraid to say, I don't know when I don't know. So uh, if I say, I don't know, it just means that, that you've, you've stumped the guy, which uh, is maybe not that hard to do. But I would be happy to take uh, a question or two if, if there is any. Barring that, uh, we will let you go, and hopefully you'll come back for the sale on Monday. If you throw your questions in chat, guys. Yes.
scroll back through and see if anybody's asked anything. Yeah, in fact, Amy actually made a good point that the uh, the 44 Tomback nickel is kind of the equivalent of our steel cent. Right. Okay. Smokey, what are some good double die dates in Canada cents? In Canada cents, uh, one of the best ones is 1979. There is a real good doubling on that. Um, also, throughout the 60s and the 50s, uh, they're not doubled, but they're called hanging and there will be a line from the maple leaf hanging onto the la last digit or the second last digit, um, like it's being hung there. The the and uh, they're quite popular as well as as varieties. I have a question for Mr. Hughes. I see the tokens are valued at a penny and half penny. Are the token tokens legal tender back then? They were legal tender back then, uh, but as I say, uh, back then that was before Canada was a country, so uh, they also used uh, U.S. currency, British currency, uh, Spain, and France, uh, uh, some some coins, and it's similar to the United States when they first started as a country before they established their own currency. They used other people's currency. I also noticed that there was, uh, who is on the $10 note? Um, that is Sir John A. MacDonald is on the $10 note. Um, I just answered Riser's question. <laughs> and the, uh, the next one down, what year was that penny? The penny that I showed you? Um, I'm not sure if that was a question or the one that I don't was know if they doubled. Were talking back the, 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 the doubling penny was 1979. The last year of the penny was 2012. That was the last last uh, coin uh, or penny made in Canada. John Wolf asks, I love the bird scent. Is there any value to the... Not, not, not a great deal. No, uh, you can buy probably a roll of them for a, cu a couple of bucks, type of thing. I mean, that's worth a lot. Is what Phil four five seven said about his question earlier. Oh, he was asking about the. Can you about the one that I said was like three grand? Oh, the, the 23 penny? The 1923 penny? Yeah, if you're asking what year the, the really expensive one was, yeah, it's the 1923. That's the one that's like tw like two thousand five hundred bucks. And in, in and so far as the uh, the question about the V nickel being brown, uh, the Tombacks were only made in forty two and forty three. The the steel ones that had the chrome plating and some of them were missing were made in forty four and forty five nineteen forty four and forty five. 23 of the year with the dot. One penny that had the dot. No, 36. <laughs> yeah, Dakota, that was 36. 1936. 23 is dotless. Yeah. <laughs> um, a good question about uh, gold denominations that are printed. Uh, they have many, many gold, platinum, silver, uh, platinum, uh, platinum. Uh, Palladium. Palladium. <laughs> I was going to say Palladium. <laughs> uh, but they have a lot of different coins. Uh, Canada was the first uh, country to develop a system of being able to make gold with four nines in purity. And recently they have come up with a way to make gold with five nines, point nine, 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 five nines. 
Um, oh, I forgot to switch the heading. My bad. Oh, okay. Okay, John. Uh, what I will do is I will take a look. Uh, I'm, I'm, I would be quite sure somewhere I have a roll of 67 uh, of the bird scents. And if I do, I will give it to Lewis and he can add it to the sale. Just realized I forgot to change the titling on here. It's not an auction. So yeah, this is not an auction. This is Canadian Extra Berry Hughes Coin Seminar. Seminar. The auction will be on Monday. There we go. All right. Any more questions? Joe Durbin wants to know, what do you think about the controversy with 1858 Larson actual vintage totals? I personally have not uh, been uh, aware that there is a, a, a large uh, controversy about that. But um, all I would do is go to my trusty Charlton, which will tell me. 1859, however, they, they have so many varieties of 1859, I could see that they have some discrepancies possibly oh, about that. I'm just looking up here on the 58 penny. <laughs> It shows about a, about a million and a half were made on, uh, of the U.S. or of the 1858 penny, about a million. Well, our time is more, almost up. Um, if there's no more questions, I would like to thank everybody for um, dropping in this last hour, and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something about it. And um, if you ever have any questions, uh, bounce them off of Lewis and he can get a hold of me. Uh, if you have a certain need or want in Canadian, uh, feel free to drop Lewis a line and uh, he can uh, get a hold of me and quite often I have it or I can get it. Thank you very much for your time. Which one of these was the one you wanted to remember doing? For the giveaway. Was it the one with the well, or yeah. Well, it doesn't matter either one. Just, just pick one. It doesn't matter. All right. So we are doing a giveaway, and you guys can thank Barry for this. So our giveaway item is a Canadian small scent collection. You can see there it says 1920 to. Just stick around. It says 72. Uh, no, they can't. Case. Oh, yeah, I got the read. Sorry, I didn't even readjust the cameras. <laughs> oh, wait, no, they can't. It is missing the, the expensive go. key coins, so I don't want everybody to get too excited yet. There we go. So, yeah, it's the Whitman, it's the Whitman Canadian Small Scent book. And, as I said, uh, the Uber dates are not in there. But you do get some of the the nice oldies. Smokey's like darn. <laughs> <laughs> George the fifth, George the sixth, and then Queen Elizabeth start. Okay. How are we doing it? All right. So we're going to do this very carefully. I'm going to hand Barry a piece of paper. And I'm going to hand Barry a pen. Yes. And we currently have... 26. 26 people watching. So he's going to write down a number between 1 and 30 without, show, without letting the camera see it. Yep. And when we type go, everybody... Guess a number, and if you guess the right number, you win the Canadian coin book. Unless we have a 14-way tie. <laughs> oh, it'll be the first. And make sure you guys are all in live chat. Okay. 
JC has to do it too, Sam. Listen. You know what the number is, I don't. Yeah. I, I don't even know what it is. So Barry's watching. <laughs> We got a winner. All right, stop. Ross. Ross. Stop. I think it was S. Ross went flying by. It was number 15. All right. So number 15, if the mods could confirm. I don't know whether. Fifteen, fifteen. Yep, I got S. Ross. So, all right, congrats, S. Ross. You are the winner of the Canadian Penny Book. S. Ross, if you've never gotten anything from us, please email us. Yeah, S. Ross, email us for your shipping info. So that way we can get that out to you. It's cheapskatecoins at gmail.com. All right, and our seminar clue for the end of the seminar giveaway is 1976. There's our clue, 1976. All right, everybody, thanks for coming. John Smith is next. The link to his YouTube channel is down in the in the, in the description below. John Smith, or John Wolf, rather. Oh wait, wait. <laughs> the link to his channel is in the description below. And thanks everybody coming out for the coin seminar. Uh, thank you again, Barry, for for being here. Oh, well, you're welcome. And he's got to rush because he's got another appointment to get to. <laughs> All right. So, all right, we will see everybody on Monday. Again, we're going to be having that giant Canadian auction. Those of you that are on the mailing list, we've already mailed the lot list out. Pre-sale is available. But we will see everybody on Monday. Bye.